Got a table for two booked for Holloway, please. Yes, Mr. Holloway. Come this way. Thank you. A bit up market for you, isn't it? I don't eat at the pub every night. Nah, sometimes you pop down a KFC. Oh. Hey, did you bring your wallet? Listen, I invited you to dinner. I mean, we both know the risks of the job, don't we? You never know, tomorrow uh, my number could be up, some crim with a sawn off. And if you can't come to a nice place like this, have an expensive bottle of wine, what's the point of working? I wonder if I could offer you a drink. I'll have a beer and... Uh, yeah, a beer. Two beers. Yeah. <laughs> Science makes me feel like I'm on a date. Are you going to say something? So what do you think of the last Tyson fight? No. <laughs> well, uh, if it was a date, it wouldn't be so bad, would it? I mean, I see more of you than anyone. And, well, it's not as though we exactly hate each other, is it? No. I mean, the way I see it, we get on, we get on really well. Yeah. But uh, we've never took it any further, have we? I mean, do you have a? Uh, you think about it like you and me? Oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And what do you think? Well, it's just you know, it's well, it's working pretty well. And... <laughs> But don't you reckon it might mess things up a bit? Well, I wasn't thinking of it in a, in a negative way. I thought it actually might be quite a good experience. No, uh, it wasn't that. It was just... Well, you know, sex makes things complicated and the next thing you know, you're in tears and I'm trying to transfer out because I can't stand you. And... Sorry. Can't you let your uh, machine get it? Oh, no, it's an automatic answer. Yep, Goldstein. Get you a cup of coffee in the morning, too. Right, what's the charge? OK, I'll be right there. What's up? Oh, an old mate, she's in the lockup, asking for me. She a copper? Yeah, ex, Holly Dean. Worked with her at Rose Bay. You know, in your beginning, you don't know if your ass is on fire. Showed you where the tap was? Yeah, she did. Surprised you don't know, she's pretty good looking. I haven't got a black book, you know. Thanks very much. I'll wait out of here. Hi, Rachel. Good day. You're shocked, aren't you? I'm a bit surprised, yeah, but you know. It's been five years. Expected a change. But not quite this much. What happened? The job. Kept trying to kid myself I could cope, you know, I could just go home and switch off. Didn't happen. Maybe I should have taken up yoga or something. A bottle of vodka seemed like a better idea at the time. Yeah, well, it's a long way from a few drinks to here. You'd be surprised. Here you got a few priors. Soliciting heroin. <laughs> yeah, I just... You know, I went straight out of the coppers and head of my true vocation. <laughs> and I think I came from such a good Catholic family. <laughs> Anytime you want to stop the jokes. So what tonight's job was what? For the smack? No, it was for my rent. 
I'm on the methadone program. I don't need to buy my smack anymore. Great. Anyway, how can I help? Last time the magistrate said if I offended again, I'd go inside. <laughs> and I can't, Rachel. I just can't. I mean, I'm sort of getting my life back together. I mean, I might not look like it to you, but if I go inside, there's no way. You know? Or with a smack, I'm an ex-cop. Yeah, yeah, I know. So what? I've got some information. About what? About a drug importation. And you want to do a deal? Yeah, but I'm scared if I speak to the wrong people, I'm going to get lost in the system. That's why I want you in on this. Huh? Well, I can talk to the DEA, yeah. So the shipment's coming from Thailand, I take it? On a 48-foot yawl called Daydreamer. The crew? Skipper's from New Zealand, Gus Dixon. He makes the trip pretty regularly, always with a couple of couriers. They're the ones doing the dirty work. Gus stays with the boat, they go inland, do the shopping. Any other names for us? <laughs> it's been a string of them. This time it's a couple, Des and Julie something. What about the shipment itself? Usually the drugs are below deck, in the boat locker, under the starboard berth. They're in half kilo packs, no markings. How come you know so much about it, Holly? <laughs> if I said I'd made the trip, I'd be incriminating myself, wouldn't I? Let's just say I know some people involved. What happens once the yacht gets into Australian waters? Once it enters the harbour, it'll be intercepted. Someone in the speedboat, a kid maybe. I take the drugs head for land. Where it'll be met by? The arrangement's different every time. Sometimes there'll be another courier to meet them. Or the person in the speedboat will have an address to deliver it to. It depends on the day. You know who's running the show, mate? <laughs> Whoever they are, they're clever enough to make sure the links in the chain never meet. So... Just supposing you had made the trip, Holly, who would have commissioned you? <laughs> I don't know his name. He's a kind of a middleman, you know, like an agent. He organises the lackeys. Gives them a call, tells them where to meet the yacht. No one else knows his phone number or address. OK. So when can we expect the daydreamer to arrive, Holly? Word is that it's tomorrow. No, I don't know. I'm going to sit here. I don't know. OK, everyone, take a seat. <clears throat> All right, stragglers, stragglers, shuffle up, shuffle up. OK, everyone, it's on. The target yacht daydream has been located. We're expecting her to enter the head sometime within the next three hours. We'll be intercepting her with an unmarked boat here. We will take the heroin and substitute it with these identical packs. Now, at this stage, the two couriers on board will be replaced by Detectives Goldstein and Detective Briggs. The yacht will then continue on course. Well, we're expecting her to meet another courier somewhere within the harbour. Now, me and Detective Harvey will coordinate operations from here at Steel Point. Another unmarked boat with uh, Senior Constable Sykes and Senior yeah. Constable Johns yeah, from the DEA. You. They'll observe and follow the boat all the time she's in the harbour. Now, the rest of you, you have your assignments and I'm sure you know what to do. Very important, to avoid people with scanners, all communication will be by portable radio through Channel 2. Now, is there any questions? No? Geoffrey, over to you. A prime concern here is for the safety of our officers. Now, we don't know how many people there are. We're going to assume they're armed and we tell you otherwise. Approach with extreme caution. Right. Take care of yourselves. You get seasick? No. Sitting backwards in a bus, that'll do it. But don't fight some fine. If you think you can't handle it, never I'll swap. No, like I said, it'll be fine. Not possible, Frank. Need a physical match with the courier. Word is he's young and good looking. Well, I think you're gorgeous. Thank you. I'll keep you posted, Jeff. Turn 
have reason to believe you're carrying prohibited drugs, sir. No way. This is the charter boat. We just come from Singapore. These two on their honeymoon. Honeymoon, eh? Congratulations. Found it. I'd like you to meet your new crew, Detective Briggs, Detective Goldstein. Okay. And don't be scared to yell at them if you want to set a jib or something. Tell them the fact that they're carrying loaded guns puts you off. That is, unless you're planning to do something stupid. Watch your step. Okay, boys. Let's go. Let's come on, right Take care now. Thank you. Tommy. Goldie. Got it. Happy honeymoon. VKG Sydney Water Police. This is boat one. Go ahead, boat one. The two couriers have been replaced by detectives Goldstein and Briggs. The couriers are on their way back to the station with the two officers now. Over. Copy, boat one. Boat two, this is boat one. Standing by, Frank. Good. Your first contact. So eyes open and hands out of pockets. Copy that, Frank. Two to boat one. Target yacht daydreamer passing by us now. Boat two to boat one. We've got a ski boat, about a 20 footer, heading towards daydreamer. Looks like a ski boat. Looks like we're on. Is this your contact? Yeah. This is Daydreamer. By one? Yeah, the drop's been made. Uh, it was picked up by a bloke in a green and white regal ski boat. Uh, R-I-C-N was the redger. We're on his tail, Goldie. Good on you. OK, we're heading back to immigration. All right, see you back at the station. Boat two, do you copy? Copy. we got the ski boat. I want you guys to stay with the Daydreamer until you get to immigration. Then take everyone on board back to the station. Over. Copy that, Frank. Great. Frank plays hero while we play escort. What's the go between you and Holloway? Oh, no, there's no go, mate. Just uh, very good friends. Yeah. yeah, but you better watch yourself, because uh, he's a jealous type. I'm sure he thinks we're on together. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's not that funny, you know. Oh, yes, it is. I'm married. Come here, bring the motor up. Got some netting around the prop. Well, shouldn't you report in? No, I'll fix it. It'll only take a couple of minutes. But we're losing them. OK, hand me the phone. Yeah, Goldie, it's Sykes. We've got some trouble with the engine. It'll only take us about three minutes to fix.
Code 5. Looks like the drop's been made. He's heading your way, so pick him up. Over. What's the go, Gus? No idea. Afternoon. You got something for me, Gus? Yeah, down below. Do you want to get it? Everything all right? Yeah. What's going on, Gus? What are you doing? He had a gun! Back up! Get away from me! Back up! Calm down, just calm it! Shut up and back up! Why do you have a gun, Gus? Why do you have a gun, Gus? He's a cop. They both are. We were set up. Got a gun? Yeah, I do. Give it in. Slide it slow. What have you told them, Gus? Nothing. Well, you must have told them something. Why else would they be here? I'm telling you the truth. Just oh. shut up, Gus. Sir, put the bin down. Put your hands on the table now. Please. This is a movie or something. You have any ID? Yeah, in the truck. Tommy. Come on. What I'm trying to do is pick up some rubbish. This is supposed to be a well-oiled machine. There's no way this would happen. Unless someone tipped them off that we could be waiting. Something went real wrong. Yeah, it looks legit. We're checking it out now. Well, you're saying around here we might as well get back to the yacht and find out what our captain has to say for himself. Boat one to boat two. Boat two here. Foxy, what's your ETA on the station? Two more minutes and we would have been out of here. We're not at neutral bay yet. What do you mean you're not there? I mean we're not there. He has a engine trouble. It's fixed now. ETA three minutes. All right, well, you get a move on. We'll see you back at the station. Fine, I'll give Rachel a call. The mobile telephone you are calling is switched off or not in the mobile service area. Please try again. That's a daydream. I think she's drifting, mate. She's heading for the rocks. Tommy, can you get us over there? Fred, park the starboard! Oh no, I don't believe this. Nothing down below. Everything all right? Two men dead and Rachel's missing. What do you reckon? Oh, 
Yeah, she's a cop. We were set up. They were already waiting for us. Hey, what do you mean they? She had a partner. We killed him. Dixon's dead, too. Then what the hell is she doing here? Well, I didn't know what to do. Hey, hey, hey. Are you an idiot? Are you I an idiot? I didn't know what to do. You should have killed her, too. All right. Do you not think that letting off a gun here is going to bring attention to us? Hey? Hey? Look, we're going to kill her, but we're not going to do it here! You get her in the car. Know what you have to do. What are you gonna do? Look, I will clean up your mess for you again, right? But once we get out of the city. The crime scene's gone over the yacht now, and the divers are checking out the area where it was found. Has someone contacted Rachel's father to let him know what's going on? No, because we don't know what's going on yet. Oh, Frank, we have to consider the possibility the divers are going to come up with a body. Why would they toss her in the drink and not the others? It doesn't figure. I don't know. No form of logic in this. I'll say there isn't, because if there was, I'd have been on that boat with her. Is that right, Frank? Yeah. In that case, you'd be dead. OK, um, listen up, folks, will you? It goes something like this. No, no, the other one. This one officer dead, no one missing. Someone intercepted the daydream, and we don't know who or why, and we don't know whether it's related to the fact that the heroin wasn't picked up from the garbage bin. Whoever intercepted the yacht, we're assuming, did it around here. That being the case, we can assume they dropped off on the mainland either here, here, or here. Well, we've got our people, and we've got local patrols in the area. Right. Well, let's hope it's here or here. More residential, more chance of being seen. Now, our informant, Holly Dean, reckons it's the man in the middle. He's organising the pickups and the drop-offs. So if we can track him down, we can find out what went wrong. Who's the middle man? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, of course you do, Des. Your wife's already told us you're the one who made all the arrangements. You were the one on the boat. Would I get protection? I mean, I mean you know, as soon as I open my mouth, I'm dead. If we think there's enough threat to your life, then, yes, protection can be organised. And for the wife and kids... Oh, too. for the whole bloody family, Des, just give us a name. D Dazzler Davies. Ring any bells? Uh, no, his, his real name's uh, Ian or something, I think. He, he lives in Double Bay. We checked him out on cops. He got done about eight years ago for heroin supply, but since then, nothing. Dress in double bay. I've got a couple of my mobs to go and pick him up. Frank, crime scene. I found something on the yard. <coughs> G'day. There's a compartment hidden behind some panelling down towards the bow. Is that where you blokes found the heroin? Right. Found it in a sail locker under the starboard berth. Well, it looks as though something's been hidden in that compartment. It's been built especially. More of the same. Well, you wouldn't go to that trouble for your seasickness pills, would you? Keep at it. Hey, the two drug couriers didn't mention anything about a second stash. So is Gus Dixon importing for someone else? No, unlikely, mate. It's probably a separate arrangement he had with the same employer. Maybe they always carried a second stash in case something went wrong. Yeah, none of this gets us any closer to Rachel. Harvey. Yes. Yep. Yes. My boy's just got to Dazzler's place. Found him on the kitchen floor with a bullet through the back of his head. Looks like a professional hit, Frank. Well, that explains why the first package wasn't collected from the garbage bin. Dazzler couldn't get away, could he? He hadn't been dead long. The pathologist said less than an hour. Which fits in with the time frame. Someone gets on the daydreamer, twigs that Rachel and Briggs are cops. He gets on to the big boss, tells him about the setup. The boss gets worried that if we get to Dazzler first, Dazzler might start spilling his guts. So the boss arranges a hit and bang, the only person who knows their identity is dead. Except for whoever got on that boat, Frank. Found two fishermen who saw a silver runabout with three people on board heading for Bradley's Head at the same time we think the daydreamer was intercepted. Any descriptions? Do we know if it was Rachel? No, they couldn't get close enough to see any faces. All right, get over to the uh, Parks and Wildlife, get on to the range or anyone else that was there. Yep, Sykes is onto it. But what about the general search in the other areas? Keep it in place, it may not be anything. 
Vic, hey, Jason, you want to... Police, this is Portable 2. Go ahead, Portable 2. I've been talking to the park ranger at Bradley's Head. About 40 minutes ago, a guy reported his car being swiped by a late model black Mercedes. We seem to be in a bit of a hurry. Whoever it was took off without stopping. Any more details to get a rego? Uh, no. Uh, late model, damaged offside guard. That's all I've got. Any sign of a female passenger? The ranger doesn't know. I've got the details of the guy whose car got swiped, but he's not answering. I got that. Keep keep at it, all right? Okay, I'll get uh, RTA online to late the owners of late model black Mercedes in the Sydney area. Thanks, Helen. Taylor, can you circulate a call to all patrols? Tell them to look for black mercs, pull them over, check their bona fides. What? Frank, you could have just been a speeding car. We I know don't it know could have been, but it's all we got. It's better than black Okay, enough, all right, okay. okay. You agree? All right. right. Frank? The divers just radioed in. They found Goldie's gun. There were five unspent rounds in it. So if she was shot, it wasn't with her own gun? Something I could do. Yeah, come on, she'll be all right. I'll tell you, I'll get hold of those bastards. Mm. Helen, how are you going on that car? There are 23 black Mercedes in the Greater Sydney area. Frank, we're checking the names and addresses now for criminal records. Hello, hello, are you there? What's going on? Rachel's mobile. Sounds like it's been answered, but there's no one on the other end. I haven't been able to get through until now. Put it on speaker. You did, mate. That's a car. You wait two seconds while I get some matches. Oh, good, it's not up to date. Enough of it is. No one's there who answered the phone. Now she's got it on automatic answer. Okay, so we've got Rachel's phone. What are they done with Talkative lot, aren't they? Rachel's got an analog phone. Telstra can trace the general area the phone is in. Stupid. Here, slow him down. Sorry, sir, we don't take five cent coins. Well, I'm sorry, sweetheart. All I got is a hundred dollar note. Toll gate. M4, M5, Harbour Bridge. Or whichever one, it can't be more than what, ten minutes from the McDonald's? Taylor? I want you to get onto the toll gates, the M4, the M5 and the Harbour Bridge. Find out if anyone's tried to pay their toll with a handful of five cent coins in the last ten minutes, ended up paying with a hundred dollar bill. Ask if it was a black Mercedes. Yeah. Also get on the pole here, get them to have a chopper standing by. Yeah. Helen, Doug and I will hit the car. 
When we get out of the city, you tell us which direction we should be going in. OK, I'll let Jeff know what you're doing. I'm going to enjoy killing this bitch. Water Police 200, this is VKG Sydney Water Police, sir. Water Police 200. It was the M4 toll gate. The woman remembers the guy because he was rude to her and she's pretty sure it was a black Mercedes. Did you see anyone else in the car? No, maybe another man, but that's all. OK, we'll head for the M4. And can you get on a pole here and tell them we're tracking a black Merc? Do it. We'll do. Pole Air, this is VKG Sydney Water Police. We don't know for sure they've still got Rachel. Not any other phone. Very optimistic, Doug. It's in my nature, Frank. Water police 200, this is Pole Layer 2. Go ahead, Pole Layer 2. We've spotted the target vehicle it's on the M4 toll way, approaching Blacksland. Thanks, Pole Layer. Keep us updated. Will do. Pole Layer 2 clear. Why the Blue Mountains? Plenty of bush up there. It's a good spot to dump a body, if that's what you were thinking. Yeah, there's heaps of places around Sydney. Why choose a place more than an hour's drive away? I don't know, Frank. I don't know. He's dumped the body. He's gone up there for Devonshire tea. Water Police 200. This is Sydney Water Police. Water Police 200. Frank, we've got a black Mercedes in the Springwood area. It's registered to a David Cowitz, which, according to cops, is an alias for David Lipinski. It's got a criminal record and a string of minor drug charges. Plus two counts of grievous bodily harm. What's the address? The address is 35 Valley View Road, Springwood. BKG Sydney Water Police clear. Frank, would he go home first? He's a local. He'd know a thousand nice deserted spots to dump a body. Doesn't sound like this bloke's got too much of a conscience. That is done. Water Police 200, this is Pole Air 2. Go ahead, Pole Air 2. Turned off the Great Western Highway into Macquarie Road, Springwood. We've got a fair idea where he's headed, Polair. You better hang back so you're not detected. Stand by for further notice. Copy that. I'll land to him. Cut the siren, Doug. Water Police 200, this is VKG Sydney Water Police. Water Police 200. Frank, I'll get onto the SBG. Jeff, I'm not sitting on my ass waiting for them to mobilise. Frank. They've already killed at least two men. They're not going to have any qualms about killing you as well. We don't even know where they've got gone. If they have, if she's still there, you'll be putting her life in danger as well. Copy that, VKG. Keep driving, Doug. Going to wait? They won't show up for another half hour. Reckon it's putting her in more danger. Assuming she's still alive, Frank. Yeah, Doug, assuming she's still alive. You know, you keep saying that like I might have forgotten. Here's a bag. And a phone. Blood there, Doug. Let's go. Hard work, isn't it? Hey? Get a move on. Dig faster. Okay, honey, let's start count one, two. What was that? Drop the gun! Drop the gun! 
Drop the gun! I Bring got you! Me. Don't shoot! Down. Oh. Right down, you face! Come on, move! Come on, because I'd love to do it! All right! You are under arrest. Oh, God. You are not to say or do anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you say or do, mate, you need to get You understand that? It's OK. Oh. You'll be all right. Be OK. this month, that's for sure. Anyway, how are you? You're out, I see. Bail. Looking like we'll get off with a fine. Mm, lucky you. Just don't go robbing any houses to get it, will you? I feel like I should be apologising to you. Oh, yeah, go on. I mean, my life's screwed up right now because I couldn't handle the job, but even on my worst days, I never went through anything like you just have. And this is my cue to cut in with the helpful advice. Oh, yeah, you got any? <laughs> if I did, I would have used it myself. <laughs> Just talk to someone about it. I'll take him down to the Sydney Police Centre, charge him and get him out of here. Yeah. Sorry, I was a bit narky out there before. Yeah, sure, thing. Right, Keith, I'm sure. You're dead, Holloway. As long as it takes, you're dead. Scared, Frank? Yeah, shaken. Yourself, you Rachel, I'll organise somebody to take you home. It's all right, boss. I'll do it. In fact, you've got Rachel home in one piece. Is the only reason I'm going to overlook you ignoring my orders today, Frank. Let's get out of here, Frank. See ya. Uh, Goldie, um, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for what happened. It was my fault that you were taken off the yacht. You should have called for backup. Ah, uh, look, Gavin, it's just one of those things. Just a chance, you know. Sorry. Yeah. Addicted. Not as strong as I look. I think you're out of milk. Why don't you go to bed before you fall asleep at the table? Mm. Go on, you'll feel a lot better up there. Mm. Come on. I kept thinking when I was in the boot of that car. What? I wish I'd never taken that stupid mobile phone to the restaurant. <laughs> well, tell me the truth. Oh, I kept thinking about the time you were away. You know, after that knocker. I gotta tell you. I hated sharing the office with someone else. It just didn't work. That replacement of yours, they didn't want to drive, I didn't want to drive, they refused to drive. It was a bit of a nightmare. Look, I'll be the shove off here. Don't. If you don't want to. Stay with me. <laughs> 